you know, this is going to end sometime. You know, fuck, I can't do it forever. But uh, I don't, I don't like to. I don't even think about that day. I don't, I don't even want to fucking even go n near that thought. <laughs> Everybody, how are you doing today? Here I am in Urbandale, Iowa, which is just like a suburb of Des Moines. And this is a location, yet another one that I've always wanted to come to, and I'm, it's hard to believe I'm actually here. Um, yeah, where I'm going at the end to the uh, grave that I'm visiting, that's one that's been on my list for a very, very long time. I'm here doing a story about Paul Grave from Slipknot. I'm also going to talk a little bit also about Joey Jordison, who is in Slipknot as well, one of the founding members along with Paul. Now, Slipknot has, if you don't know Slipknot, hmm. it's kind of hard to describe them. I was trying to think how to describe Slipknot and their music. Some people call them new metal. I wouldn't call them new metal, I call them metal. Uh, they happen to come along at the same time as, you know, Corn, Limp Biscuit, that sort of thing. But what they do is a little bit of a different sound and it's more metal to me. And they wear masks on stage. They have chaotic, crazy live performances. I mean, that's what helped make them huge was their live performances. And they're just, they're pretty sensational. They've got a couple of really great albums. I love personally, Iowa, All Hope Is Gone. Really great albums. I remember personally, I used to work at a steakhouse in Toronto years ago, years ago, and somebody says Slipknot's coming in, and I said, what? Like, what do you mean Slipknot's coming in? Sure enough, the band came in. There's about 15 people in the party, and Slipknot's a big band, like nine members, ten members. And I'd only ever seen them before with masks on, so they looked a lot different, obviously. But also, I was kind of a little scared. Not, not, you know, they're they're scary looking man. And I was wondering, what are these guys gonna be like? And nicer guys. I mean, they're from the Midwest. They're from Iowa mostly, and just really great. So that's a memory I always have of. I don't. I don't think I served them. I think somebody else did. I was a server there. I can't remember. It's been that long. But yeah, they were really, really cool. Really cool. And I just met Corey Taylor earlier this year. I'll put in a picture right now. Uh, I was just at a, a Mad Monster, I believe it's called, convention. And Corey Taylor happened to be there. And a mutual friend of ours uh, said, hey, you want to meet Corey Taylor? And I was like, yeah, of course. So I got to meet Corey Taylor. Now, switching gears from that, we're going to talk about Paul Gray who was, I said, the bassist, co-songwriter, and the founding members of the band Slipknot. Tragically, he passed away, and it was in this hotel right here. So we're looking at Town Place Suites here in Urbandale. And I called ahead, because it was in room 431 on May 24th, 2010, when Paul Gray passed away here. I called ahead because I've, I needed a place to stay while I'm here filming in Iowa, this in this area too. And I asked her to reserve a specific room, which I've done before. And she said, the lady on the phone said, what room? And I said, 431. There was a, about a 10 second pause. I didn't hear any clicking of the keys or anything like that. And then there was just a, that room's not available. I said, okay. So I came here and I'm actually staying on the same floor. We're gonna go up, we're gonna take a look. And the room that I'm staying in is identical to the one that Paul stayed in. I've already talked to somebody that works at the hotel, shall remain nameless. And uh, same floor, 
same side of the building it's on the opposite side of the building and I'll show you that and I'll show you that uh, his room and I'll show you what one of the rooms looks like so I know Paul Gray suffered or struggled with drug abuse for quite a while and he was found dead here in room 431 on May 24, 2010. Now there's a 911 call. Usually I don't play 911 calls because I think that it's a person at their worst moment placing that 911 call about somebody who's having their worst moment. He was found by a maintenance worker and it's very calm. Uh, the dialogue back and forth. Oh, I should add that I'm not certain that I was denied room 431 because of the notoriety of it it could be because it maybe just wasn't available the the hotel there's one uh this car go by there's one room left basically for tonight it's a very 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 busy night i'm not sure why but when i got to the front desk and checked in i was told that i just got the second last room so the 911 call the guy uh it's a maintenance worker who, Apparently, repeated calls by Paul's family to the front desk because they couldn't reach him. He wasn't answering his phone. So, he, the maintenance worker, had to break open the door, or however they do it, and found a hypodermic needle next to Paul Gray's bed and a lot of pills scattered on the floor. Their initial autopsy determined that no foul play or trauma was involved, but then around June 21st, I believe it was, they ruled that he had died of an overdose of morphine and fentanyl and that he had developed significant heart disease. And it also revealed traces of Xanax in his system, which is an anti-anxiety pill. And apparently he had struggled with Xanax for quite a while. And I know that there was a court case with his doctor who had overprescribed more than one person. Slipknot themselves, the band, the remaining members had a press conference the day after his death without their masks on where they paid tribute to Paul. So on May 28th, his funeral was held. We're gonna to go to his grave afterwards. And also, who is buried there, I believe is, I, I think his brother is there as well. But one of the other founding members of Slipknot, who is Joey Jordison, he himself is buried there at the same cemetery as Paul. Now, he was a founding member of Slipknot, like I said, but around the December of 2013, Slipknot announced that Jordison had left the band, and they said it was personal reasons for his departure. And then Jordison, he released a statement saying he was fired and that he would never abandon the band or their fans. But then there were years went by, a few years, and it was very weird. Like, nobody knew why he left the band. It turns out that he had transverse myelitis, which is inflammation of the spinal cord. And it left him with the inability to play the drums towards the end of his time with uh, Slipknot. So official cause of death for Joey Jordison, I don't believe has come yet. But he died on his sleep at home on July 26th of 2021. So just last year, he was 46. So I'm making this video so I can, I get the opportunity to travel for my channel. So for Slipknot fans around the world, cause they have a huge following and I want to visit their graves. And I also really enjoy the music of Slipknot. I have a, so much different music that I like and Slipknot's a band that I've always liked. But this is for the fans of Slipknot. And I know that this is a um, somewhat morbid, Location, the first part, well, both, I guess, somewhat, but it's part of what I do on my channel, so we're gonna go in and, uh, yeah, I'll probably film the lobby afterwards because there's a ton of people in it. No, he doesn't.
red, that's the elevator. Immediately beside it is room 431. And I will show you what one of those rooms looks like. So I'm saying in 413, not 431, 413. And all of the rooms look the same on this side of the hotel, I was told. And there's cleaning fluid left there on the windsill. That's odd. But this is it. It's not too big. It's just a simple hotel room. There it is there. Little kitchenette, bathroom, and I had already brought my stuff up, and I looked out the windows to see what the view is like, and it's uh, it's not anything special. It's just an interstate, and more hotels off the side of the road. It's Urbandale, Iowa, so not too much going on around here. So we're about 10 rooms away. That's it. And now we're gonna go visit the final resting place of Paul and his former bandmate. Let's go. Sonic section, you're gonna look for this big tree, and there's a grave. I'm assuming this is the one with flamingos. There's always flamingos on it, apparently. Let's take a look. It reads, Paul Dedrick Gray, April 8th, 1972 to May 24th, 2010. Beloved son, brother, uncle, husband, father, and friend. And he would have been 50 this year.
Now, I wasn't too sure if his brother, I know his brother passed away just uh, this year. If he had a headstone yet, but he does. It's Paul's younger brother, Damon Anthony Gray. You can see here, same photograph, family members. There's some other ones. He's a big Kansas City Chiefs fan, I know that. Unfortunately, I don't I have a uh, don't have an extra rock. I just walked back to my car because I do have, I brought two rocks to the cemetery, but I did have an extra one. I always have a bunch, but it's been a long trip that I've been on. Now the next grave is going to be a little difficult because there is no pin on finding the grave. I just know kind of the section. So I'm going to take a little drive around to see if we can find him. Okay. I'm looking around already. It's a small cemetery, but it's well marked. So I think I might be able to. Straight at the back of the cemetery, you're going to find a section called Resurrection. And right across from it is a really big section called Meditation. And shout out to a channel called Swole Pack who came out here and did a video showing where Joey Jordison's grave is. And they're very, very um, precise. So this section is meditation and we're going to walk right over here and uh, Joey's grave should be right around here somewhere. I have a feeling it's the one with the drumsticks. It's going to be right here. The beer cans and lighters. I'm going to fix this. It's very windy out here. Things are going to blow away. Here, when you have the power of music within your soul and your heart, nothing can stop you. Nathan Jonas Joey Jordison. April 26, 1975, July 26, 2021. Beloved son, brother, uncle, and friend. Graves of Paul, Damon, and Joey. Normally I'd end the video right here, but I passed something interesting that I want to show you just in the cemetery. It's a beautiful cemetery. As you can see, like I said before, now Des Moines is a big city, but still has a kind of a small town vibe. So many graves here with flowers, fresh flowers. And with the amount of cemeteries I've been to on my channel, you don't see that too often. This many, I'm surrounded by them. First thing I noticed when I came into the cemetery, how many fresh flowers were at. So many graves, and that's amazing to see. Uh, let's go take a look at something I want to show you. So we're back right where Paul is buried, right there. Joey is right down the street, just so you know they're very close. Paul's brother Damon is right there. 
what I wanted to see was I noticed out of the corner of my eye when I was at Paul's grave that there was a big chair over there built into the uh, grave and I noticed there's another one and another one so there's three of them it was a very popular thing in the 19th century to uh, build chairs actual chairs onto graves so people would have a place to sit and they were called mourning chairs and then that kind of went the wayside of benches after a while people didn't really build the uh, chairs as much and of course legends sprung up about chairs like this in cemeteries about devil's chair there was one in florida i went to and there's a few of them all across america but these don't look to be up for any specific grave as i can see they're just here at the cemetery And they look to be somewhat more modern. I mean, it's a, it's a modern cemetery. So it's not, uh, this is a 19th century. But yeah, maybe with this white box in the middle, maybe it has something. I'm not sure what this is. Maybe we can take a look. Created the heavens and the earth. It's just here in the middle. Oh. One chair, two chair, three chair, no chair. Yeah. Hmm. I thought that was interesting. Rest in peace to Joey, Paul, and Damon. Right over there, right by that tree. That's uh, where Paul and Damon are. And Joey's just off in the meditation section out that way. If you want to come out here. Beautiful. Iowa is beautiful. Rest in peace to all three men. And uh, love you all. Peace out.